It wasn't long ago that the Internet of Things was nothing more than a concept. But over the past decade, the number of connected devices has exploded into the billions. In 2021, it is widely expected that the average North American will own 13 connected things, one of which is likely to be their vehicle. As the number of connected vehicles reaches into the hundreds of millions, data from these vehicles is being used to deliver new and innovative solutions, focus on improving the efficiencies of our mobile services, making our roads safer, reducing surface congestion and greenhouse gas emissions, streamlining public services, and generally improving our overall quality of life. Telematics and other connected vehicle technologies have a long history of improving commercial and public sector fleet operations. What was once a technology that focused on tracking vehicles to report on productivity and route compliance, telematics has matured into a broad-based IoT technology grounded in big data and analytics. As connectivity options continue to improve, so too do our automotive technologies, giving rise to a tidal wave of mobility data. Our modern vehicles come pre-equipped with anywhere from 20 to 50 separate sensor systems, a number which is expected to explode into the thousands with modern advancements in ADAS and autonomous vehicle technologies. These vehicles are not only able to sense their own internal operating environment, they are now equipped with technology that allows them to sense their external environment as well and provide contextual information on travel times, road conditions, and much more. From this standpoint, our future vehicles can be thought of as smart sensors on wheels, and as such, our fleets, and more so our over 1 billion consumer vehicles, represent one of the largest smart sensor networks in the world. Take for example a modern public works fleet operating in a northern climate. In a typical snow event, snow removal vehicles are dispatched based on minimum snow accumulation thresholds. And subsequent to this dispatching, these vehicles drive fixed routes at fixed intervals. What if, instead of using these kinds of rigid standards, we used connected vehicle data to improve regional operations? What if, for example, ambient temperature readings from local connected vehicles could be used to create hyper-local roadside temperature maps with the potential of indicating freezing conditions before they actually occur? What if subsequently, we could monitor ABS usage and traction control usage from these same vehicles and validate or invalidate the presence of ice? What if we could use windshield wiper status to indicate areas where snow or sleet is actively accumulating? All of this is possible today. Now imagine that our public works agency had access to these transportation insights in near real time and could use them to better dispatch and route their snow clearing equipment. Connected snow plows and salters could be directed to areas with the worst driving conditions and routed to maximize safety and efficiency, all while feeding data back to a consumer facing 511 site that notifies local constituents when and where it is safe to drive. As conditions change over time, new insights are produced and snow equipment is dynamically rerouted to the areas that are most affected. This is the power of connected vehicles. Similar examples exist in commercial fleets, where data-driven decision-making practices are leading to massive boosts in profitability. By studying real-world fleet activity, and in particular by characterizing vehicle usage and duty cycles, data models can be used to uncover unique ways to optimize a fleet. For example, Imagine a large national fleet that operates a hub-and-spoke distribution model. By studying the usage profile of vehicles within this fleet, it is determined that the same number of trips could be consolidated into a much smaller number of vehicles. In fact, some of our research indicates that 15% of fleet vehicles can typically be discarded via the deployment of a carpooling solution. However, it has to be the right 15%. This is why connected vehicle data is so important. Not only can this technology be used to pinpoint the exact 15% of vehicles that can and should be discarded, but it can also be used to remotely manage vehicle access and control. Gone are the days where fleet managers have to distribute physical keys. By digitizing the key and enabling its remote distribution, fleet managers can deploy an entirely new form of on-demand free-floating mobility options to its employees. The net result? Lower capital and operating costs and improved productivity. The same process is easily extended to electric vehicle suitability and multimodal trip planning. By centralizing connected vehicle data into one environment that allows for the necessary processing, data-driven decision-making practices enable new operating models and ultimately save time and money. Utility companies and power authorities are also harnessing the power of connected vehicle data. As EV sales approach 10 million vehicles globally, energy providers are scrambling to accommodate a spike in charging demand. 
In some cases, this demand can be quite taxing on local infrastructure. For instance, depending on local distribution equipment, charging a dead Tesla Model S can be equivalent to adding four houses to a local transformer. Using this map, it is not hard to understand why utility companies have a vested interest in managing EV charging loads. But how do you know when to curb supply without negatively impacting EV usage? To start with, it is important to understand the criticality of an individual charging event. For example, a consumer may be more willing to delay or curtail a charging event when their vehicle state of charge is at 80% versus 5%. In the first scenario, a charging event is not likely to impact the vehicle's short-term availability, whereas in the latter scenario, there is a high likelihood that the vehicle will not be available without some added juice. Connected vehicles can provide this information over the air and in near real time, giving utility companies the necessary insights to manage EV charging activity via targeted smart charge rewards programs and in a manner that allows them to flatten their energy demand curves. Furthermore, this data can be used at aggregate to inform planning activities and justify investments in charging infrastructure expansion programs, in turn building a smarter grid. Connected vehicle data can even improve our commutes to and from work. By harnessing movement data from millions of vehicles, traffic operators can build better traffic signal phasing and timing schemes and grant priority to specific vehicle classes and corridors based on real-world driving conditions. Parking insights can be used to develop better and more commercially friendly curbside parking plans and educate governments on when and where there is inadequate parking infrastructure. Pavement conditions and drive quality can be indexed at scale in real time using embedded accelerometers and gyroscopes to inform public works departments when and where to dispatch road maintenance and repair crews. And most importantly, connected vehicle data can save lives. These insights are being used to identify and in some cases even predict collisions and other traffic related incidents before they actually occur. Although much of this seems futuristic, there are aspects in deployment all around us today. There is no better example of this than in New York City, where the Department of Citywide Administrative Services has embarked on an inspirational journey to reduce and one day even eliminate traffic related fatalities. Everyone has the right to move around their community and their streets safely. Whether they're walking, biking, driving, or taking transit, we have a moral responsibility to keep people safe. This is something that touches everyone. We see in the US, for instance, 40,000 traffic deaths a year. That's about 110 people a day losing their lives on what we consider preventable traffic deaths. People are not perfect. They're going to make mistakes. How do we make sure that when those crashes happen, they're not severe? We know that there's a lot we can change out there on the streets. We can lower speed limits. We can use camera enforcement. But most importantly, I'd say we can really change people's behavior. The goal of Vision Zero is simple. Zero traffic deaths or severe injuries among all road users. We're working with communities, particularly at the local level, helping them learn from each other about what works to reach Vision Zero. There's a holistic approach to everything we're doing out on the streets. We're really thinking about how do transportation professionals work with law enforcement, work with public health professionals. There's not one single silver bullet approach. New York City's really been the leader. Not only are they the first to commit to Vision Zero in the US, but they've definitely made dramatic change in how their agencies work. What they saw was an uptick in traffic deaths and injuries, and the advocates came forward and said, this has got to stop, enough is enough. They started using telematics to understand where the problems are most prevalent, to see what makes a difference. New York City's Vision Zero Action Plan comprises 63 specific initiatives. New York City operates the largest municipal fleet in the United States, with over 30,000 fleet units. New York's been implementing a wide variety of safety measures to reduce crashes in the city fleet. Every single one of our 80,000 fleet operators goes to safety training. We are currently tracking 22,000 vehicles real time using telematics to monitor their speed, location, their acceleration, their braking, and by doing that, prevent crashes from taking place. We are also looking at the design of vehicles. We are the largest implementer in the United States of truck side guards. 
where there were not good sidewalks or good bikeways, they've added those. Where there was not enough crossing time for people to walk safely, they've added that time. They then also worked on a state law that allowed them to use speed enforcement cameras, and that's had a tremendous impact. We've already seen 75% reduction in the last five years in fatal events, a 20% reduction in per mile collisions. We adopted it first in New York City and now it's getting tremendous expansion throughout the country. We think this is something that should be done nationwide. We're seeing Vision Zero really become a movement and we're seeing people really change their strategies. Today there are more than 45 communities across the U.S. and more in Canada that have committed to Vision Zero. We're seeing a lot of momentum and community engagement in this work. Vision Zero isn't just a tagline. By setting that goal of zero, it really does change the mindset. It's about making that really bold and unequivocal commitment of we should do things in a way where everyone can be safe.